Hello, and thanks for joining us at Two Ride the Globe. We hope to have more of our global travels up soon, so keep checking back. After spending five months riding all over Europe, jumping in and out of the Schengen zone, we had reached our limit of 90 days in Schengen countries within a sliding 180-day period, so it was necessary to head outside the Schengen zone for a couple of months. We had used Croatia and the UK, both non-Schengen countries at the time, to extend our stay in Europe, but as it was coming up on winter weather, it was time to go somewhere else. Oh, and by the way, as of January 1st, 2023, Croatia is now part of Schengen. So if you're planning a similar trip, keep that in mind. There are still other places like Bulgaria, Romania, Montenegro, Albania, Serbia, Turkey, Cyprus, and others that are not part of Schengen and where you can spend time resetting your Schengen clock. So we put the 700 Tenere in storage in Spain, went home for about 30 days to visit friends and family, then packed our backpacks and headed out on a series of flights through Los Angeles, Tokyo, and finally to Bangkok. The plan was to spend a few days recovering from the flights in Bangkok, doing the touristy thing until we were ready to jump on a rented Honda and see more of Thailand, at which time we would fly to Chiang Mai and do what's referred to as the Mae Hong San Loop. The traffic in Bangkok was a bit overwhelming at first, but we'd soon learn it was nothing compared to Vietnam. It's easy to get around by taxi or tuk-tuk, and for most shorter journeys, we took a tuk-tuk. There's no meter in a tuk-tuk, so be sure to agree on a price ahead of time. We met a tour group at the River City Shopping Center for a walking tour of several of Bangkok's most famous wats, or temples. That evening, we jumped in a tuk-tuk and headed to the Asiatique Riverfront Shopping Center, where we boarded a boat for a dinner cruise on the Chow Phraya River, the main river through Bangkok. The all-you-can-eat buffet was great, and entertainment was, well, entertaining. Bangkok was spent touring Ayutthaya, the second capital of Siam. Ayutthaya was built in 1350 and was attacked by the Burmese army in 1767 and burned to the ground. The capital was later moved to near Bangkok. There are many large areas of remains here and clearly Buddha was and is the main focus of what was built and why. Inside one of the spires was this bat colony. After a couple of days of being average tourists and doing the tourist thing in Bangkok, we flew to Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. The weather was a bit cooler and we were itching to get on the bike and go. We headed first towards Doi Inthanon, the highest point in Thailand, seeking some cooler weather. I think most people who ride the Mae Hong San Loop start by going north out of Chiang Mai directly to Pai, but we aren't most people. So we headed over to Doi Inthanon and on to Mae Saryang first. We went to dinner in Mae Saryang and this was the menu. Google Translate helps, but it was mostly just point and hope for the best. It turned out to be a great meal. North of Mae Saryang, near Tung Bo Tong, we came upon these incredible fields of sunflowers. They were all in one small area. It was clearly a busy tourist destination, but we're into free sightseeing stops. So we stopped and admired the huge sunflowers.
large poinsettia bush on the way back down from the sunflowers. Just outside of Mei Hong Son, we detoured to Hua Pu Keng, a Karen tribe village. We had to park the bike and take a small boat across the fast flowing river to get to the village. These tribes are often referred to as long necks for obvious reasons. This part of Thailand borders Myanmar and the mountains in the distance are in Myanmar. We passed many roadside markets such as this one, and the roads and scenery continued to impress. so many caves to explore, hikes to do, rivers to kayak, that a week here seems about right. We kayaked down the river and hiked to the Susa Cave. The following day we hiked to the backside of Tam Log Cave early in the morning to watch the Swifts exit the cave. Then it was on to Pai for a few days to just relax and wander the village. at a coffee shop outside of Pai, I met these guys from Yamaha, Malaysia. Yamaha, US, Malaysia, meet in Thailand! Yeah. like we do, you've probably noticed that every time you want to take a beautiful photo from the roadside, there are power lines in the way. It's like that here in Thailand too, except sometimes the power lines are on the road.
sign for the number three curve, and I suddenly remembered I wanted to go there. After all, how many places do you go where people just want their photo taken with the road? We returned to Chiang Mai and on our last day in Thailand, we visited the Elephant Nature Park, spent the day interacting with elephants. We got lucky and it was a little one's birthday, so they make these cakes out of fruit and invite several of their friends to have cake. Thanks for watching. Be sure to catch our North Vietnam video coming soon. If you have any questions or would like more info, you can reach us at tworidetheglobe.com. Ride safe, keep exploring, because if not now, when?